My name's Bruce Shillingsworth. I'm a Murawari budgety man. I live in a little place called Bavarana. It's where the Darling River starts. The Barwon runs into the Darling, and then down further down the river, the Darling runs into the Murray. Over the Christmas break, we see the devastation of our rivers, the drying up, how communities have suffered um, the, the brunt of what's happening with our rivers. I mean, down in Manini, down the southern parts of the Murray Darling, lots and lots of fish kills. You know, it was over the news, it was talking in our communities. It, it's affected our, our First Nation people in a lot of way. We, in our life, when we were growing up, we spent a lot of time on those rivers. We've camped, we've fished, we had recreation. My mother, she lived on the river, she camped on the river. She's 90 something now, she's never seen the river in that state. So we sat on the riverbed and we said, we need to do something about it. We need to get water back into our rivers. So when I came back to Sydney, I said, well, we need to talk to some people. We need outside help. We need help from the bigger communities, like the bigger cities like Sydney. And so I gathered around, we gathered up some people and we started to sit around talking about it. Like we, we need to do, we need an action. Mm -hmm. We need to build a protest. We need to get that awareness out in right across Australia and right across the world of what's happening with our rivers at the moment. I went to a forum over at the UNSW and they had a forum about our rivers, the Murray Darling. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't any um, First Nation voice at the forum. So I got up and I said, well, I'm a First Nation people. I want to speak on behalf of my, my people, my, the river people. And, and, and that's where it started. So, we, so I got a group, I got some people that did some filming. So I went and done some filming on the river. We had, made a small doco that's, that's out there now on Facebook that people are looking at it. But I've also uh, done some um, gallery exhibitions. So the exhibition is around, tell the story about our river story. All the paintings relates to the river. It tells a story about our fish, about mum's story, how she lived on the land, how the river was when, you know, when we were kids and how it was previously for thousands and thousands of years. So I'd like to send a message you know, through my artwork and through my stories, you know, telling people the real story of what's happening with our rivers and how can we fix it. Part of this discussion is you've started to talk about, um, bring up some ideas about how the problem can be fixed. Well, I think one of the solutions is, our first solution is we need to give control back, decisions back to our First Nation people. First Nation people have been living on the rivers for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So they know the history. They know the land. They know the rivers. Right? They travel the rivers. They know the climate. They know the weather. They knew everything about our rivers. So, but all of a sudden it disappeared. So the government has tried and tried and tried. Non-Indigenous people over the last 230 years have tried to fix our rivers. But look what they've done. Look what they've done. It seems to have got worse. It seems to have got worse. It seems to have got worse. And now our rivers, now our town, river towns have now been introduced to bore water. You know, bore water has a lot, a lot of salt, sodium in it. It's not very healthy for the community. So now we're tapping into the underground water, our artesian basin. A lot, lot of communities are going to tap into it and slowly but surely that's going to run dry. Where do we go then to look for our water? It's one of the solutions we said that we, we need tanks, you know, to collect the rainwater. When, it's, when we get rainy in our rainy season, we need to collect that water, which is very vital. We need to put filters on our taps. That's very important. We need the government to make proper policy, proper law around protecting the water and how the water can be shared. We need to work with farmers. You know, farmers are also struggling because they can't grow their crops. They can't water their, you know, their livestock. You know, here we've got big irrigators. We've got, you know, big corporate bodies that are out there with big pumps that are taking a lot of the water. The corporate greed that are filling the huge dams. Like, for, like for instance, the Cubby Station, you know, holds more water than the Sydney Harbour. Mm. Why are we allowing people to take our water? Mm. which is in the old days, the Aboriginal people said, no one owns the water, it's there to share. And we need to share it properly amongst the people that are using the water along our rivers. There's, there's, there's not just a sort of, uh, uh, you know, stealing of water mm. and maybe wasting of water, but there seems to be a bit of a big-scale racket going on where you've got corporations that have been set up mm. to, 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 first of all, steal the water, yep. um, sometimes with government subsidies, well, and then the, sell it back again well, I think at a profit. The, 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 <laughs> I think the, government's, the government has a play in this. I think the government has supported a lot of those big companies that we're talking about. 
I mean, a lot of those big dams and, and you know, the big irrigation were funded from our taxpayers' money, our money, that was spent building their dams to store water. You know, 75% is owned by who? And not just by the people, it owns by certain companies. Now we've got to buy our water back. Why do we need to buy our own water? You know, we're fighting for a Royal Commission. Get the government, get in there and get a Royal Commission in and see what happened to a lot of the funding they've been giving, you know, mainly to the Murray-Darling Basin, they manage our rivers, where those billions and billions of dollars have gone. Have they gone to big companies? Or are they gone to our, you know, our politicians? But we need to get an investigation. You know, there's some corruption that's going on. We need to make those people accountable. So now the campaign has got uh, a, a new major project, which mm-hmm. sounds very exciting, mm-hmm. which is the Corroboree Festival. The Corroboree is called Yama Ganabaka. Yama meaning welcome. Gana meaning us. And Baka meaning our rivers. Welcome to our rivers. Look, this is going to be a big, biggest gathering. We're going to hit the river towns, Walgut, Bree, Burke, Wilkenya and Menindi. We're going to do the biggest gathering they've ever seen. This event is going to be as big as the 1965 Freedom Rides. This event is going to draw attention, not just over Australia, but right across the world. We'll have filmmakers, we'll have producers, we'll have journalists, we'll have photographers, we'll have everyone on the river. We're going to draw a convoy of people from all over Australia. We've got busloads that's going from Sydney, from Adelaide, from Victoria, you know, from Melbourne and from other parts of, parts of New South Wales. And we're going to gather in these towns and in the evening we're going to do a huge cobbery. And we're going to do it the way that the First Nation people have done it for thousands and thousands of years. And that's gathering, doing our rain dance, you know, singing the land. Our old people need to sing that land back, sing the river. You know, bringing together of people and empowering our communities. We'll be sitting with the elders, listening to their stories, listening to their, their history and what they're suffering from. We're just listening to their voice. You know, we'd like to be the voice for those that haven't got a voice, and that's what we are. And we want to gather as many people as we can to come and experience, you know, that experience with the people in those communities. It'll be education for non-Indigenous people. It'll be education for all people to come to see. But we need to build that awareness of what's going on around our rivers and how it's being controlled and what's happening to the devastation of our rivers. And I think it's one of the ways we bring healing to the land and fixing the rivers and the problems that associate with our rivers. It's bringing back a collective of people non-Indigenous people and Aboriginal people coming together to determine to fix strategies and a way to fix the rivers. Because people got different ideas, they got, you know, different opinion and also got different skills in certain areas. So we might use those, you know, people with different skills in different parts so we can fix our rivers. Well, certainly in the, in the cities and maybe even in some of the smaller towns around Australia, there seem to be more and more people, particularly young people, who um, have come into action because they're worried about the climate crisis. Now, is there, is there something, does this connect with uh, this project for the Corroborees Festival? Should they be part of this? Should they join in this campaign? Is this, is this relevant to their concerns? Well, it's a part of all of us. I think it's, it's this Mother Earth, it's Mother Nature that we're worried about. I mean, we only live on one planet. There's, only, there's no plan B. We can't go in at the moment. So what we need to do, we need to fix our environment. We need to put it back the way it was. We need to bring those natural cycles back together, especially the water cycle. You know, we need water to fill those rivers, to fill the creeks and fill the billabongs and lakes. So we need rain. We need rain. And what we need to do is start putting plants, trees back into the ground, the vegetation back in, put it back the way, natu- the way nature was. Look, this is what climate change has done. You know, the drought was a part of it. You know, the drought plays a big effect in the drying of our rivers. But how do we fix that? You know, we need to look at Mother Nature and how it operates. Well, some people <clears throat> might be saying, but we're up against such um, powerful vested interests that, you know, don't seem to be listening right now. Mm. Um, where do we see hope in, in, for change in this? You know, where do you see hope for change in all this? Look, there's always hope when we're, when we're always alive. So what we can, we as people, as grassroots people, I believe the numbers will change the game. We as grassroots people now need to start rising up and say we need to start doing things for our future generation, for my children, for your children and their children's children. That's important. That's that's important. Yeah, it's about our survival. I said the other day, 
that we are the first generation to experience climate change and we might be the last to make a decision or make changes to fix it. That's why it's so important. So we need to work extremely quicker than what we are today, you know, around climate change. And that's been using renewable energy. Stop polluting the air, stop polluting our rivers, stop polluting the food we eat, you know. Put water back in the rivers. Our natural resources need to stay where they are, you know, because they're the ones that sustains it at the end of the day. Mother Nature sustains it. Mother Nature's going to be here after we, we're gone. Hang on. Yeah. I think the government is covering up a lot of things yeah. and, we, and, and, and they're not letting people, the community, know what's going on. Yeah. They don't want to talk about it. They didn't talk about it in the last election. So now it's time to talk about it. Now it's time to make those who are responsible, make them accountable. And we need to start talking about the truth about our rivers. We need to start listening to those voice of the rivers. We need to start listening to the voice of Mother Nature and First Nation people. <laughs>